Hello developers, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about abstracted syntax tree or AST for short. Normally it's a concept that we, we learn from school or you know uni uh, or like when you read the book about the compilers, uh, it's pretty far away from on daily work. But if you want to use the tools like a JS code mode or Bible uh, to transform your source code in some advanced way, it's, it's a very powerful and useful um, um, concept that you need to understand. So in this video, I would like to introduce you the tools and um, uh, the necessary concept in uh, uh, have the fundamental um, understanding of the AST. So in the following other videos about JS code shift or code mode, uh, we can have a easier learning curve. So let's get started. So basically, AST is a internal representation of your source code. Uh, the source code will be compiled by a parser uh, into a format or internal data structure, which is essentially a tree. And then by providing the API to manipulate the tree, you can achieve a lot of uh, advanced benefit benefits. Uh, for example, if, one, if you want to format your code um, from one way to another. So you can read the code into your uh, internal format and then when you output, you can use the uh, tree API to, you know, have the indentation. Or if you have used the Bible plugin, for example, uh, you want to make sure that uh, the code standard is following a particular um, standard. Like you, uh, when you use a verbal, uh, you don't want to use a single letter verbal or when you are formatting a string, you use a string template instead of the double code stuff. So how the computer see the program is really very uh, is really different than the human beings. So for example, if we have this line of code, uh, we see that it's a function call. Uh, we are assigning the result into a variable called the result, and it, the function convert title will you know pass in. I will accept a title variable and a um, the uh, what do you call that TypeScript enum, and the result will be a string. It looks like a string, and uh, that's what we as human read. Uh, but what computer says is something like this. Uh, obviously, this is visualized. Computer see that as a date as a treated structure, but this is a little bit complicated. But let's have a look at the. Uh, a very simple example um, to understand the building blocks. We can start from a, a variable declaration uh, st statement. I'm using the tool called AST Explorer. So basically you put your source code on the uh, left hand side and on the right hand side is um, pass the result. So basically it, when we see the constant uh, A equals uh, 1 or like assign 1 to variable A. We can see it passed a um, the whole uh, expression uh, or statement into a verbal declaration. So this verbal declaration represents our source code here. Inside the declaration, there is a verbal declarator, which is if you look at the left hand side, it, the a x one is highlighted. That means that part is a declarator. So for a declarator, there are two parts, the left hand side and right hand side. So you can see the ID or identifier here is representing the A on the, um, um, on the left hand side. And there is also a numeric letter which is a one. And there are some metadata like a start from uh, which character and end from uh, to which character and something else like uh, the uh, line numbers um, file numbers uh, and so on but if we uh, ignore the uh, the um, if we ignore the actual information basically it says um, for this identifier uh, it has a name called a and uh, it has another one, another part of the uh, verbal declarator, which is um, init um, um, property. And for the init property, 
uh, it's a numeric literal which is has a value of one and the, all of them together formed the verbal declarations so this is a very uh, simple example if we um, somehow um, making an assignment of a equals to b plus one right this is also a, a valid uh, JavaScript syntax. So if we look at the uh, the tree here, it's all it's also a verbal declaration, and uh, for the declarations, it has a, uh, a verbal declarator, right? Verbal declarator is the a equals b plus one, and if we expand this declarator, it also has a identifier which is the a on the left hand side, but on the right hand side it has a binary expression. If we expand the binary expression, it has um, left and right and the operator. So for the left, it's the identifier again and with the name of B. And for the right, it's a number um, literal, uh, which has a value of one. So this is how basically a assignment uh, or declar uh, verbal declaration um, statement looks like. Obviously, this is a, just a verbal. If we somehow define a function, let's say uh, an array function, um, let's say we are defining format equals to something like input uh, and we want to return um, input dot to uh, uppercase, for example. And let's commit this out. And actually this line here is a comment line and the value is const a x to b plus one. So it's a comment. Uh, and for this, this line, and, and uh, as you can see, it's still a verbal declarator, which means we are assigning something to another variable. But in the init part, it's a, a array function exp expression. Inside it's a row function a expression. For the a row function expression, uh, when I select the uh, the tree node, you can see on the left hand side, the input um, the uh, the row and the return input to uppercase is highlighted. That's uh, also reflecting on the node I select on the right hand side. So if I expand this uh, row function expression, uh, you can see there is a parameters uh, section. If I expand it. You can see there's an array here. Uh, if I'm, uh, if you can see there's a um, parameters uh, ar array, and inside it there's an identifier, which is an identifier, and the name is input. So let's say I want to add one more um, parameter here. Let's say I don't know uh, how. How do we want to format? And if I select the how, uh, you can see. In the parameters, we have the inside the array. It has two identifier. One is the, uh, the input, another is the how. So as you can see, it's linked to the uh, to the uh, source code. And for the uh, return statement, which is a block statement, um, and it's also if we collapse the uh, parameters, the body part is uh, this is the body. Uh, that's a body of the uh, a row function expression and inside it you can see there is a uh, body parameter for the block statement and uh, it is return uh, statement and inside the return statement that's a call expression and if we expand the call expression you can see um, there is a call e which is a member expression and if we expand it that's object which is the input. Uh, if we look at the input here, and uh, also there is a property, it's called two upper keys. So all the uh, property and the object belongs to the member expression, which is a dot, which is a dot notation. We can see that member expression is something dot something else, right? So both the, the, the left hand side is the identifier for the object and the property is uh, right hand side. Uh, so you can see this member expression. So the member expression is part of the call expression. And all the together 
for the return statement. And for the return statement, it's part of the block statement because we have this uh, bracket here uh, that forms a block statement. And inside, the, uh, and uh, for the block statement, it's also part of the uh, array function expression. And all the come together to form a verbal declarator. So this is a very ex simple example. You can see how the computer can pass the uh, source code uh, the string into a well-structured uh, format, which is the AST. And uh, for the AST Explorer, there are a few other things, uh, like uh, it has a transform. For example, we can transform that with JS Code Shift, uh, which I will have another video to cover. But basically, that JS Code Shift provides um, the API for you to uh, manipulate the tree here. So that allows you to make changes to the source code by changing the tree nodes. That's pretty much about the AST abstract syntax tree. And I hope you enjoyed. And in the next video, we are going to talk about JS code shift and code mode and how to do that and how to use the JS code shift to write your first code mode and then to transform your source code from one way to another. And I will see you there. Thank you.